see whether it's worth underclocking or whether it's too much of a hassle and too much of a trade-off for slightly lower temperatures and less power draw on your CPU. So I use my rig with an Intel Core i5-4690K and an EVGA 760 Super Clocked Edition to see whether it would benefit me to do an underclock, except to the extreme level. Even today, the CPU is pretty great for gaming and gets some impressive frames in modern titles with a decent graphics card. So in order to test the improvement in CPU temps, we use the Intel Stock CPU Cooler. Yeah, that one. With some Arctic Silver 5 Thermal Paste. It's possible to do slight underclocks and still get the same performance on a workstation PC. But in gaming, it's a completely different story. In order to push our underclock to the limit, we set the CPU frequency to the Windows 10 limit, 1 GHz. This is actually quite easy to achieve, considering that's literally the inverse of overclocking, and you literally go into the BIOS to change the settings. So there was no doubt that the CPU would become the bottleneck here, even though the GPU we were using was older than the processor itself. So after some time messing around in BIOS, we discovered that we had to change one value, and bam, our CPU was suddenly the speed of a computer straight out of 2001. So we booted back into the OS to test the performance decrease. We started by testing some games all put on very high to ultra settings, and initially, the game loading times were pretty bad, even considering how slow the CPU was. In Rocket League, we saw that it started quite a bit, but was mostly playable, averaging about 46 frames per second with a minimum of 0 and a max of 67 and honestly the game was totally playable except for the occasional lags and stutters that occurred in action-packed areas such as around the ball and where a lot of players were going. Rather surprisingly there was only about a 9 FPS decrease after undercocking the CPU to 1 GHz. Over at Team Fortress 2, we also saw surprisingly playable frame rates, averaging about 41 frames a second with a minimum of 0 and a max of 63. The game kept up alright, and even in more intensive areas, everything performed rather smoothly. There was about an 18 FPS decrease after underclocking the CPU, and occasionally the screen would freeze and the audio would loop, but it wasn't significant enough, and overall it gave a good experience. CSGO was the last game we tested and it was impacted quite the most, but the game still remained extremely playable even after underclocking to 1 GHz. The game managed to get an average of 51 frames a second with a minimum of 0 and a max of 517. The game is very well optimized as we noticed, and also there was no surprise that it managed to run so smoothly on such a slow CPU. There was about an 88 FPS difference and only the main menu had major lag, but otherwise we saw pretty smooth frame rates all throughout. Alright, so gaming on this 1 GHz beast of a computer isn't so desirable, but how have the temperatures and performance changed? So running an IDA64 test revealed uh, that on the stock speeds, we got about a tropical 72 degrees on the CPU versus the Arctic 44 we got on the CPU underclocked at full load. So that's about a 28 degree improvement, which is quite huge considering that we were just using the stock Intel heatsink and nothing but the clock speed and core voltages were modified. Running a Cinebench CPU test gave us a measly score of 105, which to put into perspective is actually worse than the 139 we got on from the Core 2 Duo from last video. Yeah, that's quite sad. So now to answer the question we asked at the beginning of the video, is it worth the lost performance? Well, considering that it's a, even a pain to open up and use Google Chrome or go to any website, I'd say not really to the point we demonstrated, but if you're doing a slight underclock somewhere to the 2 GHz margin, uh, as an example, it could be a decent trade-off if you don't plan to game anytime soon, and for small form factor computers, this would probably be really good and a viable option to cut some degrees off your CPU heatsink. Anyways guys, thank you for watching this video. If you liked the video, make sure to leave a like, and if you liked it, then make sure to subscribe. Also, if you want to see our video on the LGA77 tape mod and the Core 2 Duo we talked about earlier in this video, and whether the tape mod is worth it on older systems, make sure to click the end card at the end of this video to watch that. Anyways, I'm out. I'll see you in the next one.